Hello everybody. In our video tutorials, we sometimes use special combinator characters in our CSS syntax to target HTML elements. And I get a lot of questions in which people want to understand more about the combinators that we apply. So I would like to quickly clear everything up regarding the CSS combinator selectors. And there's only four of them, so it won't take very long. Okay. Fire up your favorite code editor and get a new example.html file ready. You're going to get four different code examples. Now the first combinator is going to be the descendant combinator. So let's take a look at that one. So the terminology alone should tell you what it does. It targets any elements of this type that are descendants of this element type. So you can see div has ul as a direct child element and then the ul has child elements inside of it of list elements. Now it doesn't matter how deeply nested these list elements are inside of this div, they're still going to be targeted because they are descendants of this div. Let's quickly see what that renders. So you can see all list items properly targeted. Now this next example is the child combinator. So you can see that the descendant combinator just used the space. The child combinator uses the greater than symbol. So the elements have to be a direct child of this element in order for them to be targeted and styled. So you can see we have a div and inside of it the first child is a paragraph. Then we have an article element and inside of that article element there's a paragraph nested inside of it. So this, this paragraph element is not a direct child of this div element. So it's not going to be targeted for styling. But this one will because it's a direct child and not one of its deeply nested descendants. So let's see what this looks like. Now you can see that the first paragraph gets styled and targeted but the second paragraph doesn't because the second paragraph is nested into another element that is a child of the div. So it's a descendant of the div but it's not a direct child and that's what this combinator symbol does when you see it in CSS syntax. And this is the one that I get the most questions about because I use this one a lot to target direct children of an element. And I use that in my CSS syntax a lot and people have never seen it before I guess and they don't understand how it works in comparison to the descendant. So let me run the descendant now. You can see that all are targeted because they're all descendants of this div. But if you want direct children only, then you put the child combinator and you only get direct children of the element and not all of its descendants. So I hope that clears up because I get a lot of questions about that one because I use this symbol a lot in my CSS syntax. And it's just the child combinator, that's all. The third combinator selector is called the adjacent sibling combinator. And the terminology alone should tell you again what it, what it does, what its purpose is. And it uses the plus symbol in between two elements. And so basically what this is saying is anywhere where there's a P element that is an, a direct adjacent sibling to an H3. That means when it comes after it. So let's take a look at what this renders. And you can see that we get the first paragraphs are targeted for styling. And you can see that nothing is nested here. These are all elements just sitting right next to each other, so they're all siblings. So you can use this type of combinator when you want to target the direct sibling element next to your specified element. Now the fourth and last CSS combinator selector is called the general sibling selector. And it uses the little squiggly, squiggly symbol. And it works very similar to the way the adjacent sibling selector does but this one will select all elements that are that come after your specified element so you put the main sibling element that you want here and then you put the squiggly and then you put the next sibling element here and these are the ones that will be targeted for styling so you can see we have an h2 followed by two paragraphs then we have an h3 followed by two paragraphs a div and another paragraph so let me show you what it renders all right, so you can see everything after the H3 that is a P is styled.
and the div is not styled because it's not a P. So you can see we have H3 squiggly P. That means everything after an H3 that's a sibling element of the H3 and it happens to be a P, then it's going to get styled. And you can see that the P elements that are above that H3, these two P elements, they didn't get styled either. Because it has to be elements that come after it. Okay, so those are all four of the combinator selectors that you can use in CSS. Now there's a whole lot more selectors in CSS. And if you guys feel like you want me to go through all of them in little groups like I did for the combinators here, I can do that very quickly. I can go through all of the CSS selector groups and show video tutorials about how all of them work. If you guys want that, just click like on this video and give me a comment on this video to let me know that you want that. And then I'll understand that you guys want me to go further with all this CSS selector business. And we can do that on video.